In this final video, I'll be exporting the color map from Houdini, importing it into Unreal, and adding a few final parameters to the landscape material. So now let's export this color map to Unreal. So after my height field color adjust, I'm going to add a height field output. In here, I'm going to, for the file name, I'm going to type $hip forward slash texture forward slash t underscore landscape underscore d dot tga. Save this as a target file. And let's just change some of these settings. So its format is RGB. I don't want an alpha channel. Type is an 8 bit fixed. And then for the three color channels, I'm going to select cd.r, cd.g, and then cd.b. And those are all the settings we need to set. So now if I save the disk, that will write that out as a texture file. Let's take a look at our texture file. So here's my texture folder, and here is our target file. And there is our color map. So with that exported, let's import it into Unreal. Let's come to the textures folder and right click, import to, and then I'll navigate to those project files and just import that color texture. There we go, there's our color texture. Now let's drag and drop that into our landscape material. Let's give us a bit more space. And what we're going to do is from RGB, I'm going to drag off and let go and then search for material attributes or make material attributes. Let's go plug straight into the base color and then let's pop that into our output and hit save. And just to look at our landscape, we can see it's tiling across our landscape. And so we need to set the size of this texture. And we could do that using a landscape coordinates. And we then need to plug this into a divide. And I'm going to add a float. And in here, we need to set the size of our landscape. And if I come back to my level, make sure I've got our landscape selected in my outliner and take a look. And here we have, we can see it's a size of 2017 by 2017. So I'm going to plug a value into here of 2017. And then Put that into the divide. You can also make this a parameter. So I'm going to right click, convert to parameter, call it landscape size. I'm going to put this into a group. I'm going to put in zero zero. And I add zero zero just because it helps order the groups when I view them inside the material instance. Let's call this global parameters. And now plug that into our UVs and hit save. And take a look. And now it looks like it's the right size, but it doesn't line up with our landscape. And we have an option here, if I select the landscape coordinates to add a mapping rotation. So I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees and hit save. There we go. Now it lines up correctly with our landscape. And we have that color map on our landscape. So we can see this already has like a bit more detail in terms of variety of colors and values compared to those tiling textures. So let's now overlay this on our tiling textures. And we can do is just delete this make material attributes from our layer blend let's drag off and add a get material attributes
And here we can specify a single attribute that I want to get from our material. So this allows me to split out the base color, do something with it before then setting that value back to our material attributes. And what I want to do is from the base color here is add a multiply and attach this RGB to the second input of the multiply. Now I want to add a set material attributes and we can add a plus. So we have our base color. So plug in our material attributes, then this multiply to the base color and then back out to the output on our material. And I'm going to save that. And now we have that color map overlaid over our textures. So this just adds, helps add a little bit of extra variety. So here we can just see some changes in value and color. That just helps break up some of those tiling textures. Now it looks a little dark that's because we're multiplying those two textures together. So let's add some controls to help uh, adjust those colors. So let's add some parameters that allow us to adjust the hue, saturation and value of this global diffuse texture. What we could do is do something very similar to what we did inside of um, Houdini, where we can convert RGB to hue, saturation and value, adjust them and then pass them back to RGB. And I've already got material function here. So, and it's, uh, so if you come to the functions folder, find MF HSV adjust and drag and drop that into the material. We'll take a quick look. In here, we're taking an input, which is our color. So the color of the texture map that we want to adjust the hue saturation value of. We're taking it from RGB color space and converting it to hue saturation and value. So rather than being RGB, it will be hue saturation and value. And then we're multiplying those values by some parameters, which I've got stored in a vector and in our vector in the three channels of the vector will be hue, saturation and value parameters. They're being multiplied together, adjusting the hue, saturation value, converting it back to RGB and then outputting it from the material function back into our material. And for the color input, we want to have this texture sample. Let's bring this down here and give us a bit more space. Okay, and now we want to just add in here some parameters to control the hue, saturation value. So what I'm going to do is hold three on the keyboard, left click to add down this vector and then I'm going to convert to parameter and I'm going to call this landscape base color post process. And once you convert this to a parameter, you can actually come down here and set the name for these different channels. So by default, this is R, G, and B. We could actually rename these. So I'm going to call these U, Saturation, and Brightness. And now connect up the RGB output into the HSV vector. Uh, let's put it into the global parameters group because it has it's for our global texture. And now we want to plug this into the multiply. And hit save. Our landscape looks white because on our landscape base color post process, I need to set these value to one. And hit save. And there we go. Now we can see our landscape. And if I take a look at our material instance, I now have here, if I expand it and enable it, my landscape base color post process. I have hue, saturation, and brightness. I can increase the brightness. So that's increasing the brightness of that base color. So now it's not darkening it down quite so much. Can increase the saturation if I wanted to. 
We'll decrease it a little bit. As well as adjusting the hue if I needed to. I just noticed I got my global scalar parameter values also not in a group. So let's just jump into our material function and place those in a group. So I'm going to come to the fade distance and place those into the same group as my global parameters. So zero, zero global parameters. So zero dot global parameters. And the same for the fade start. And I'm going to add in one more parameter here. I'm going to come to my get material attributes. And I'm going to hit plus and set the index to normal. And come to my material functions. And I'm going to grab this material function for normal intensity and drag and drop that into my material. Let's take a look at this material function as well. And all we have in here is a flattened normal function. And this is a function that comes with Unreal. And usually this just controls the, the flatness. So a higher value, the flatter the normal is, the less intense it is. But it's more intuitive, I think, to control the intensity of the value. So all this has in here is a parameter, which I've called normal intensity. And that's being plugged into a minus one, which inverts the value and then plugs it into flatness. So now when the user increases this value, the normal map will get stronger instead of flatter. And I just find that a bit more intuitive. So now let's plug our normal into the material function input and then our set material attributes. We hit plus, add in normal and pass that normal back out to the make material attributes. And now if we hit save and come back over to our material instance, we now have a normal intensity value and we can just use this to decrease the intensity or turn it up to increase the intensity and make it stronger. So now you have a nice starting point for a landscape material. There's obviously a lot more here you can do. You could add some parameters to adjust the color of the tiling textures, similar to what we've done for the global texture map. You could use the fade distance to maybe fade between having the tiling textures close to us and then further away, just the global texture map. As for distance, that kind of works quite nicely. So there's a lot more options you can add and you can take this much further. I would also, at this point, probably go back over to Houdini and maybe start adjusting the values of this color map to better suit the textures that I've chosen on the landscape. You also want to revisit the textures you've chosen for the tiling textures. This is an iterative process and I very much went backwards and forwards between Houdini and Unreal, adjusting the color map and tweaking the values until I got something that I was happy with. And that was obviously something that plays to Houdini's strengths as this entire process is procedural. They can go all the way back to the start, even adjusting our landscape and that will ultimately update our color map. And I can come through, adjust these different colors on our high field color layers, adjust our different masks that are driving the color adjusts and just hone in the look and feel that I want for my global texture map. Thank you for watching this video series. I hope you've learned some interesting techniques for creating landscape masks and how to create color maps for your landscapes. I also hope I've demonstrated how you can begin to build useful Houdini digital assets that can be then combined together in interesting ways and easily reused, leveling up your landscape workflows.